The Effects of the Overpopulation, by Elizabeth Gruber, Österreich, translated by Michael Uproek using Figu Dictionary, July 13, 2020. In times like these, the effects of the overpopulation, in times like these, when we are precisely thrust into a worldwide crisis, the extent of which we are not yet able to assess in any wise, it is frighteningly obvious how far we human beings have moved away from the natural creational laws and the modes of life adapted to them. We have removed ourselves so far from them that, under certain circumstances, very serious and negative consequences have arisen for us, which we will hardly be able to solve unless there is finally a fundamental change in thinking. A look into the wide world and how the mastering of the virus pandemic is handled in the most diverse countries shows a deeply frightening and an unfathomable inner human behavior. On the part of many governments there is a complete failure, because the representatives of the people, who they should actually be, completely let their people down which costs or will continue to cost countless human beings their lives. There one sees the alleged crisis management, which derisively mocks every humaneness, because the complete overtaxing in crisis management has catastrophic consequences, up to ice-cold unconcernedness, because unfortunately only the preservation of one's own might of the ones responsible in government is in the foreground. It is therefore a fact that in many cases it is quite clear that in the first place, Solely the looking after the economic interests before the safety of human beings' life stands first and foremost. What is particularly tragic about the whole thing is the circumstance that even now, in this almost hopeless situation, the fundamental problem for all the inhumane behavior is not recognized, namely the excess of overpopulation with all its negative effects that it inevitably entails. The naked facts speak a very articulate language and these must become conscious and clear to every human being if he or she would go through life with open senses and be mighty in the reason and the rationality. Alone the continuously increasing high demand for food and goods of all kinds to feed the masses of people and to be able to provide them with the necessary goods has led to the development of a disastrous global dependency between all states. Hence the result is an almost inextricable tangle of politics, economics and finance whose masterminds are driven by insatiable money and avarice and go forth with the rigorous exploitation of the Earth's resources. On the one hand, there are the global dependencies and the immeasurable and insatiable increase in demand for goods such as raw materials, ores, oil, wood, etc. due to the continuously growing world population. This, while on the other hand there is mass tourism, which keeps many states economically alive, but in turn mercilessly destroys their untouched nature. Then there are also the many mightful ones of states who are in no wise capable of carrying out their office with dignity and responsibility, all of which leads to it that disastrous catastrophes can spread, such as the current pandemic spreading worldwide. Mightful corporations, companies promoting mass tourism, incapable and corrupt rulers, etc. are all caught up in the purely materialistic thinking of might and consumption, consequently it all revolves only about the commerce, the gain, the striving of profit, as well as about enrichment, might and the maintaining of might. On the basis of this manner of thinking and acting, which is far from any natural creational way of life, the logical consequence is that everything can only be such that the threatening disaster simply did not want to be seen at its origin nor could it be far-sightedly recognized. The impending pandemic has therefore been denied and played down in a lowly intelligent audacious manner for the time being. Therefore also no immediately necessary attempt at all has been made to initiate massive restrictions on air travel and tourist travel, as well borders to the affected countries were neglected to be closed. These criminally irresponsible actions are just another expression of the fact that most of the politically responsible ones who let themselves be lifted into this position in a populist manner are in no way capable of acting far-sightedly, logically and rationally. All the negative effects of overpopulation thus once again come into full effect, and this is what any human being who is mighty in the rationality and the intellect is conscious of, and indeed, 
that the Moloch of overpopulation with all its profoundly inhuman and environmentally and life-destroying effects will overwhelm us if it continues within this framework and is not rethought. When will we human beings of the earth finally come to our senses? However, every crisis has not only purely negative effects, because as always everything in the life has two sides. So here too, in the overcoming of the coronavirus pandemic, along with to the serious negative consequences particularly health of the population and the economy positive things also emerge. These manifest themselves, for example, in an unusual solidarity and concordance between certain political parties. The economic operators also accept the necessary restrictions albeit partly reluctantly whereas a larger part of the population also stands behind the decisions, which had to be taken overnight, so to speak and which do not correspond to what is really necessary. Creative and helpful ideas were and continued to be developed and implemented from many sides for the benefit of the community. With many enterprises there was and is no competitiveness thinking, but it is born out of necessity, working together without envy in order to work out ideas and proposals. For me this is a very pleasant, positive statement. It is pleasing and pleasant at the same time to be able to perceive that at least apparently a good and caring cooperation among the human beings can still be realized and function after all, as well as a firm unselfish cohesion among the population becomes recognizable. When a crisis arises, good approaches of humaneness and love for the next one are visible, even across the politics. This instead of the everyday competitive thinking. And this is just the same as also in the population and among the business community, because their two, visible similar behaviors are now unmistakable. It is a beautiful experience, which also lets me dream of how it could be if there existed no overpopulation and the unfortunate competitive struggle as well as the exuberant materialism and the unrestrained egoism would not let may human beings hearts become so cold as it is unfortunately the case otherwise and without crisis. It makes me think how far we have already distanced ourselves from these positive behaviors in our normal everyday life, as well as the fact that most of us, especially in the anonymity of the large cities, only concern ourselves with ourselves and hardly notice our fellow human beings, let alone that their needs or worries are even noted. Now, in the current crisis the generally positive condition will probably not last for very long, because already the voices of irrationality, the know-it-all attitudes and resistance against the adopted measures are active again from many sides. In addition, there is still a massive negative influence in the population, and indeed, by so-called experts, virologists and scientists, driven by a craving for recognition who often downplay the seriousness of the pandemic in a downright criminal manner or propose very inhumane coping strategies, wherewith they negatively influence many human beings in their megalomania completely taken in by themselves and their supposed cunning they do not realize what they bring about with their lowly intelligent audacious as well as reasonless rationalitalis irresponsible statements. This now raises the question how should one proceed in the right way in the event of an outbreak of a rampantly spreading disease and thus a threat of a pandemic? On the part of figure there is very well founded information about this such as how targeted measures for the prevention and spread of a pandemic must be applied. In this context I refer to the excerpts from contact conversations between Billy and his pleasure and contact person to a, which deal with the coronavirus plague, with its effects already on the 3rd of February 1995 and again since the month of November 2019. This is also by talking about how one can most safely protect oneself from an infection with the virus, which is what figure members worldwide have been orienting themselves to ever since. This important information, referred to during discussions and also laid down in writing, has been published on our figure website, and indeed, together with the very urgently necessary precautionary and behavioral measures to fight the pandemic, which would have to be taken and implemented. This coronavirus pandemic could come about because the early warnings were not heeded, and indeed, especially by the mightful ones of state, but also by the populations who disregarded all warnings. And this had the result, that the right and necessary measures were not taken early nor with a sense of responsibility 
which is why no precautions were taken in order to prevent the rampantly spreading disease. The blame also lies with the responsible ones in China, who already with the outbreak of the virus spreading, which at first led to an epidemic, all of the necessary measures should have been taken against it, which however was also not done either, and moreover everything was kept secret even if this will be denied. Namely, would something have been undertaken and done in the right manner as well as the world been informed, then there would not be a rampant pandemic today because the coronavirus would have been contained before it could spread uncontrollably and quickly around the planet and demand many lives of human beings. The human beings who died of the corona plague would still be alive, and the humankind of the earth could go about their daily lives unhindered. However also here it was and is probably the same as always. If warnings and facts are brought by ordinary human beings who do not bear high titles and are brought into disrepute by malicious antagonists on the basis of envy and hatred with calumny, etc., then the public follows suit equally and tears the falsely accused to pieces. As a result, their knowledge-rich announcements are then ignored and reviled as lies, deception and swindle and are not accepted. The referred to information was therefore announced and made public on the internet by figure long before the coronavirus epidemic spread throughout the world and has already cost well over 100 human lives to date. But as usual in such cases, no one in the wide world has reacted rationally to it in order to confront the disastrous thing early on and thus save tens of thousands of human beings from death but simply. What are the knowing ones in their own country worth? Unfortunately on our world, knowledge and truth do not apply. But first and foremost are intolerance, defamation and belief delusion. Belief and prayer is more important than listening to a knowing and warning voice that teaches that the human being himself, herself has to take the initiative, to act and take the reins of rightness into one's hands and do what has to be done instead of trusting in fantasy fairy tales concerning imaginary almighty gods from whom neither love, advice nor help or even the movement of a thought of understanding and rationality can come and will also effectively never come, because they only correspond to a brain delusion of a belief.